Good evening. Welcome to this special webinar where we will be discussing the impact of COVID-19 on the co-working space. This webinar has been organized by Workplace Trends India, which is the community building and knowledge sharing platform. It enables professionals to keep up to date with insights and trends in the workplace. Tushar Mittal, the founding partner of Workplace Trends India is with us. We also have with us uh, Karan Birvani, the CEO of WeWork India. Karan is a young and dynamic entrepreneur who has paved the way for opening the Indian market to WeWork, the New York based collaborative workplace giant. Karan has been passionate about contributing to the startup community and with a vision, uh, this same vision across 34 prime locations in India, WeWork creates a space for startups to connect exchange ideas and foster creativity. Welcome to Shard and Karan to this webinar. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anisha. Thank and you, thank Anisha. you to Shard for having us uh, and being part of work Workplace Trends again. Uh, I remember that we had an event last year and it was, uh, you know, such a success. So uh, I'm excited to do this, uh, you know, in a very different format for everyone. Uh, and thank you for having me. Uh, thank you, Anisha, and thank you, Karan, uh, and especially Karan. Thank you for coming uh, today and uh, addressing uh, this webinar. Uh, uh, hope everybody is doing, everybody's family is doing well at home at the workplace Stay and safe. India. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Stay safe. So uh, I would like to just uh, say that workplace trends uh, globally is uh, a very uh, uh, interesting platform, which is uh, developing a lot of content about. Uh, workplace and commercial real estate offices, well-being, people, place, performance and uh, uh, we uh, uh, we uh, like the idea and we thought like you know we should take it to India and in November 2019 we have done the first successful event where 400 people have attended, 25 CEOs and top industry leaders have attended and uh, we got uh, a good uh, uh, you know insight and we thought like in this tough time when everybody is at home and everybody is uh, ready to learn uh, we should start this uh, web series where first series we are starting with Karan and thanks to Karan again that uh, he agreed and started uh, this first episode with us and the upcoming episode on Friday is with Ramesh Nair he is country country head and CEO for JLL India and he will be talking about commercial real estate uh, you know post uh, 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 post COVID and he will be covering not only uh, the workplaces he will be talking about the retail he will be talking about the culture and investments a great session and uh, post that we have a Lara Yumi she is a people purpose officer uh, uh, recommended by Forbes and she is a great leader and uh, there will be many more uh, episodes will be coming to this now I'm handing over to Anisha and uh, I request all of you to be connected and uh, and attend our all webinars and series which will give you a lot of insight about the industry and to good uh, you know strength to fight this COVID storm over to uh, Anisha. Thank you. Thanks, Tushar. Thank you so much for giving us this platform uh, to be able to continue with the discussions and the sharing of the information and exchange. Uh, uh, thank you so much for giving us this platform. And Karan, uh, you know, before COVID-19 came, uh, you know, co-working space was the hottest property in the real estate segment. And uh, it was growing at a really fast clip. And uh, post the lockdown, because of coronavirus, suddenly it seems like the co-working space is out of gas. Um, I mean, how do you look at this? And I mean, as the world is uh, getting used to uh, working out of the pajamas, are you losing sleep about what's going to happen to your co-working space? <laughs> so thank you, Anisha, uh, you know, for asking that. And I think. There's a lot of people who have this question. Um, you know, firstly, I think it's an unprecedented time for all of us, uh, you know, not just the co-working industry, but I think every industry, uh, you know, when people can't leave their house and go out to spend money and, you know, interact with each other and be in, um, you know, environments where that we're used to, where there's a lot of buzz and energy, uh, I think, you know, everyone and in every industry is obviously affected by, you know, the COVID situation. Um, you know, for us, it was very important to make sure that the safety of our members and also our employees was at the utmost prior priority um, and also wanting to sort of, you know, be aligned with the government's mandate of 
uh, you know adhering to a lockdown <laughs> and and in that scenario so we took a call to obviously you know shut our buildings mm-hmm. um however we have a lot of members that actually fall under the essential services mm-hmm. you know bracket that are working extremely hard during this time to actually provide services for all of us um whether that be groceries medical you know uh, internet uh, to some extent um, uh, and those guys work out of our spaces so it's our duty to make sure that the space is available for them and we continue to do so um so that they can come and operate but yes for all of our other members the space is shut until the government mandates you know um, the lockdown to end now you know the best case scenario is that we um we are able to curtail this um you know virus um and actually get back to normalcy across i guess all segments uh, and all industries and um you know that's what we see uh, as the next step and we actually see co-working to have an advantage coming out of the covid situation um because every on every ceo's mind right now is mm-hmm. conserve cash and be as flexible and as nimble or make your business variable right and these are the two biggest um, value additions that a co-working space actually provides to the market and that's why we've got in so big so no need to invest in capex um, you know for your offices moving forward you can conserve that cash and put it back into your business um and at the same time having flexibility to you know god forbid we have another situation like this you should be able to scale up and scale down uh, your business and i think we've already seen demand coming in from large enterprises medium size as well as smaller businesses that they want to either expand with us uh, mm-hmm. you know are looking for a swing uh, swing space coming out of this so to answer your question not losing steam this co-working industry is as strong as it is has been uh, and continues to be an important part to the commercial real estate um, you know asset class and uh, and we want to continue to keep growing Yeah, but this sounds like the best case scenario that you know uh, the lockdown is lifted the virus is controlled and uh, then you know everybody makes a new plan so that you know centralization ends and you know more decentralization your workplace is distributed across your office and co-working spaces but in the worst case scenario like just today the prime minister announced the extension of the lockdown till may 3 there was mm-hmm. a little bit of a hope and a belief that at least some more services will go on stream because in his last meeting he spoke of jaan and jahan now what do you right. do now, now what is the worst case scenario so look the worst case scenario i feel is this whole thing becoming the new normal uh, again not just for co-working um you know if people can't congregate in an office like they used to or in any public space like malls you know buses uh trains airplanes imagine an airplane when you have to sit you know with three people close to each other i think everyone realizes that that might you know that's the worst case scenario um and if that is the worst case scenario then the rules of the game has changed a little bit and we will have to adjust uh but so will everyone else uh, and this is not again limited to co-working i think it's important to know that we're all in this together um and um and it leads to innovation i think that it's going to lead to us innovating and you know coming up with something else it's not going to just kill hundreds of companies just because uh you know just because we can't come out and and meet each other right uh current um uh, what what is your forecast on what happens globally to co-working spaces and uh is it going to be similar to what happens um in india as well uh, I mean, do you see enterprises globally, you know, decentralizing their offices? Yeah. So, you know, that's this is an interesting point. Um, through this whole thing, we've we've obviously seen uh, a lot of requests, uh, and also have had a lot of conversations with large enterprises as well as a lot of our members. Um, the need to have much more flexibility within their portfolio, within their real estate strategy, has obviously increased, and the light of doing it faster than they would have otherwise, you know, uh, is something that's going to be coming out of this. Um, and like I said again, is a uh, you know need to conserve cash and actually use that to invest in the business. So for your office space, like why would you go and invest with all of that money? You could just come out of come to any co-working space and and work out of it, right? um the other piece like you mentioned is having satellite offices people want to you know work from home is potentially becoming uh, something that people are more comfortable with 
but all of us have been sitting at home for weeks now and i would love to be back in an office just like this which is like filled with energy and has people uh, you know and so having offices close to your home uh, that companies can you know be a little more flexible on their employees working styles and working culture becomes even more um, you know even more valuable and that's where co-working and like our whole industry comes into comes into play right but perhaps karan this is looking ahead so far uh, what we see in co-working spaces is that it's it's uh, the go to for startups for smaller firms for freelancers uh, for one man enterprises you know yeah. because, uh, because of the nature of the offering you know short leases and you know these people do not have a lot of deep pockets so what kind of image of impact have you seen do you think i mean like we've hearing globally that you know uh, the tenants have just said sorry you know it's force majeure i can't pay the rent i have to go i can't come i can't pay you the rent so in that sense uh, do you think co working space as a segment in the entire real estate segment uh, sector is you know disproportionately affected no i don't think so so um, you know i'll i'll talk for we work in, in general about 50% of our um, business comes from large enterprises and about uh, the other 50% come from mid and you know smaller businesses but in terms of our revenue about 70 to 80% is actually from the enterprises and only you know uh, 10 to 20% actually comes from the smaller businesses so what we did at we work uh, and you know this is an interesting point because um through uh, this situation um you know a lot of us uh, a lot of other co-working players about 40 other co-working players you know have come together to sort of fight this uh, and to try to understand how we can you know come out of this stronger and you know we're trying to form an association so that um we can you know be great um to our, our partners to our landlords but also offer enough concession to our members so from from we work side i think that you know we took a step forward in in actually offering credit for the amount of time that the business has been shut uh, and we offered this into you know all of our members and offered them um, you know uh, about a 70% credit for the time that uh, the space has been shut and um, and this goes this spans across our entire member base the enterprises smaller businesses as well as medium sized businesses and um, you know we took this call because there's firstly there's no um, i would say there's no right answer that was going to fit everybody uh, and any startup and any smaller business that you know is not able to go through this we are partners to them we don't want to you know put any business uh, or any of the startups out of business they are the life and blood of our whole community and you know helping them survive is the reason why we come to the office every day and helping them grow is why we actually started you know any of these co-working spaces and so we're dealing with them on a case by case basis and trying to understand what are the difficulties you know how badly are they hit how can we create a win win situation for both uh, them as, as well as us because you know like like them uh, we also have to take care of people who have been making these spaces safe for them right who are coming and cleaning and and keeping security of these spaces our community managers that when these startups want to actually come back to work uh, you know and come back and work that their space and their office is ready for them to use from day one and so there is some cost to that and as the government has mandated obviously to keep continue to pay you know all of like especially a minimum wage and and uh, lower wage workers and we continue to do that and we've taken a step forward in offering you know a large credit to our members to help them tie through this period and we will continue to be partners and i know that all of our other co-working um companies and you know operators around the country around the world are thinking exactly the same thing uh, and i know that because we've all spoken about it and this is you know what we need to do i will say that some companies have the ability to give more credit some people you know don't it all also depends on the financial situation yes. of that business and everyone needs to take a call based on that uh, like that really big hearted of we work uh giving credit to your tenants for uh, up to 70% that's great uh what, what i want to understand is that uh, for how long can you do this you know the, the lockdown is now definitely on to may 3rd 
uh, you have to uh, pay the utility bills as well. I mean, uh, not just the wages, you have to pay the utility bills. That's a fixed cost which has to go <coughs> up. And we work as a large company, we can perhaps support to do it. What about the smaller ones? For how long can they keep doing this? How much cash buffers do they have? Will some yeah, of them you're absolute, no, so you're absolutely now. You're absolutely right, um, which is why we've come together to form this association. Because you're right, uh, us bigger guys would probably be able to deal with this, you know, a lot better. But there's a lot of people who are still important to the industry and important for co-working to, you know, in order to move forward, that need a larger voice to speak for them. Which is why we thought this was the best time for us to actually come together. Uh, and put together an association that we can then collectively go and speak with landlords. We could collectively go and speak with utility providers or the state government, uh, you know, the central government, even um, you know, for some relief, um, and be able to pass that on to our members, um, you know. And this is, I think, a thing that a lot of people are even waiting and watching. We took a step because we understand the impact that's gonna, you know, gonna be caused to our forty thousand members, uh, and we wanted to be able to offer that relief to them. Obviously, on the back end, we need to go speak. We're speaking with our landlords. We're speaking with our internet providers. We're speaking with, you know, uh, all of our operational vendors to, you know, make them understand that we need to come up with a win-win situation, um, and need to think about the long-term, you know, uh, relationship and the partnership that we. Right, so uh, Karan, we've already started getting a few questions uh, from those who are uh, uh, attending this webinar. I request all of you to kindly put type in your questions in the QA, Q&A box. Please tell us your full names and designation and the company that you're working in as well. Um, Tushar, uh, uh, Karan, before we go to the, uh, uh, you know, the, the questions that have come in, you were speaking about the association that uh, the co-working uh, companies have. Now, you must be in talks with your landlords uh, on a regular basis. I mean, you need yes. to the lockdown was announced. So, how amenable are the landlords to give you a little, uh, you know, you know, a discount or at least immediately some sort of relief? Correct. So, um, you know, we have a great relationship with all of our landlords. Um, as soon as this, you know, happened, uh, you know, we have gone and reached out to them. Uh, by email, via, via letters, and some via phone calls, um, to let them know that listen, we, you know, we are our business is affected during this time. We're not able to come and come and operate, uh, you know, our spaces, and neither are members able to come in. And so, we need to, you know, uh, have a discussion about um, a longer term viability of this, of our partnership, and try to get our, you know, waiver of a rent for these uh, these periods of the lockdown. So. Obviously, you know, landlords are also kind of waiting and watching right now. Uh, no one has, you know, taken a large step. But what we want to, you know, uh, put put forward is that, um, unlike, uh, you know, a commercial tenant where almost quasi retail, uh, a quasi retail operator and a quasi retail tenant, right, and also a custodian for thousands of other companies that work out of all of our spaces, and they're not just impacting us and our rental but actually impacting what we can actually you know provide to these smaller businesses that need to survive so and also you need to understand that when these guys come into these spaces into our spaces they're not just you know coming in they're they're going to the landlord's food courts and eating you know spending money there they're spending money around the buildings they uh, participate in building events they create an energy of that building that helps the landlord get a much better value of that, of that property as well and so you know again like having a co-working stay for the long term and working out a win-win solution that you know, doesn't impact the landlord and doesn't impact us, and at the, at the same time doesn't impact the businesses that you know reside in our space. That's the end goal. Obviously, they're going to have to have conversations across the table, and I'm sure that most of the large landlords, you know, understand this and are, are ready to have, uh, you know, an open conversation. Right. Uh, current. Uh, what sort of opportunities do you see in this crisis? There will be, you know, small players uh, who may not be able to, you know, negotiate good terms with their landlords, may not be able to survive the liquidity crunch. Uh, yeah. They will see the market consolidating. Look, it's um, it's tough to say. I think 
um, consolidation. This is a question that's come up to me in many forums, especially around co-working. Uh, look, I think there's in terms if you look at this, the landscape of players, there are very different niches of people, you know, uh, and uh, operators. There are some that are city specific, some even within the city are only centered around like a micro market. Some are, you know, only in the southern half of the space, some are only in the north, and then there's some which are pan India, right? Um, I think the smaller businesses, um, you know, you might have some that uh, find it difficult to tie through this time, uh, but if everyone follows the basic principles of conserving cash right now, making sure that their businesses are running operationally healthy uh, and you know are able to take care of their employees, I think most people will come out of this okay because um, you know we're talking about a short period of a month uh, within a span of a year, which ideally should only affect you to about eight percent of your revenue or you know an impact on your business. Um, and you should be able to like sail through that. Uh, consolidation in co-working is tough because products are very different, um, you know, cultures are very different and the scale of businesses are very different. There's probably only a handful that at least we would consider in a bucket of even a possible consolidation. You are considering, uh, you know, acquisitions because as late as February, you were saying that you want to focus on profitability. For We're definitely to not it. looking at acquisitions right now. The biggest focus and priority one is conserve cash and make sure that we are able to, you know, um, make sure we're paying our employees, make sure we're able to take our, uh, take care of our members and come out through the situation. Right. Uh, you you said that uh, uh, you are giving credit uh, up to about seventy percent to existing tenants. Uh, can you explain to us what that really means? Is that a, dis- a clear cut discount on the rentals per month, or is it uh, calculated in some other way? Yeah. So what we have um, you know uh, shared with our members is to be able to give them the seventy percent credit um, uh, towards the end of their uh, you know term. So. Through that term, they're able to get the credit for these days, um, you know, that the office has been shut or they haven't been able to access their office. Okay, so we have some questions which have already started coming in from the participants. Um, There is a question which is coming from Vikas Kalia, Head Marketing and Customer Services at Capital Land. He says, what changes do you foresee in workplace design post-COVID-19 era? as the essence of space planning may be social distancing which is quite opposite to the collaborative interactive and fun approach of a co-working space so you yeah. really have to uh, you know this question is very relevant because when i step into a co-working space it seems like uh, unlike a usual dry office um, in a, you know a regular office it's uh, yeah. going it's fun uh, you know at least more uh, collaboration there are sofas there's a uh, uh, you know, a, yeah. table is, uh, a, a table there, people can relax and work together. But now that we have the social distancing, you can't cram up a lot of people in the same space. So will design be different? Will that affect your product offering? Um, I don't think so. I think what you know, like what you're talking about again goes back to what we described as the worst case scenario. So it's not just co-working again, everything would be affected if that was like the situation. Uh, even in a normal office, in, in a traditional office, you still meet people when you bump into them in the toilet or like in the hallway or something like that, right? So you don't have to have fun couches to be like suddenly uh, um, exposed to like coronavirus. It's going to be everyone is going to have that problem everywhere we go if that's the situation. And if that is the actual reality, normal offices will have to change again, like transport will have to change, everything would have to change. And I think it's um, maybe premature to think that we have to start changing our design and like, you know, design standards and how we think about co-working. I don't know how you guys really like feel who are on this call, but I've been sitting at home for three weeks and I literally can't wait to have like human connection and like walk into a space which is like filled with energy. Uh, and I really think like, um, there is a possibility of this staggered back to normalcy, right? Where we have social distancing or, or you know, like we like to call it professional distancing um, within our spaces. 
and for that we've actually put together a strategy on you know restricting the amount of people within our common area spaces if we had a meeting room of 10 uh, of a 10 seater to you know only allow five people at a time um and and try to put as many professional distancing norms uh, or restrictions on our members as possible temperature screening at the entrance of the building higher frequency of cleaning of surfaces as well as our spaces um you know so putting every single measure that we can possibly put in order to make the space as normal as possible but like i said at the start our safety of our members and our employees will always be top priority and if we need to do anything drastic to make sure that that is protected we will figure it out um but right now uh, i think the scenario that we're talking about is maybe a staggered back to you know what was normal life uh, and we have some precautions in place which are temporary and not thinking about permanently changing space design okay so for now no design changes uh, but you know what about air conditioning <laughs> because that has to circulate you know uh and that is another pain point uh, people are worried that you know the you need circulation to ensure that the white part is yeah. stay in one place so any, any thoughts there will air conditioning have to be redone um well i i which back circulates uh and it also filters uh but again we will we will follow the government directive and the government norms and the you know regulation by any health authorities to um figure out what is really required i think right now again it's too early uh, and we have no you know we have no direction in, in, as to where that's headed right we have another question which is coming from uh, gorav chopra managing director south asia at hks his question is uh, how does uh, i think it's to you karan how do you see a shift of the very ingrained behaviors and expectations of how we work at times because of the lockdown and because of all these worries do you think there has to be a behavioral change how we work in our workplaces look i think yes there is going to be some amount of behavioral change i think more again like i said more um, you know importance given to health and safety within the workspace uh, cleaning and all of that obviously within the workspace and enterprise companies are going to demand you know higher and stricter standards and so we will have to you know like come to uh, adhering to that um what we have seen is a huge social experiment globally of what work from home looks like for your organization i think for some people people in some organizations it works and for like some organization it really really doesn't work and needing to be to be in the office or like you know together is extremely important or outside of the house is extremely important um but i don't uh, like you know in terms of um in terms of social behavior um it will take some time for people to get comfortable to being you know really in close quarters with uh, with each other until probably there's a virus or a vaccine so we're going to have uh, uh, sorry there's a vaccine so we're going to have to just, you know, take that as a comes yes but you know all said and done humans are social animals i mean we start it's not fun <laughs> i agree yeah uh, we have to find a way where we balance you know the yeah. health aspect and our need to meet people as well Uh, I mean what you guys are what we're talking about you also I mean think about it. you never go see a cricket game again in your life you never be able to go see like a concert live those things can't not happen we got to you know yes. figure out which is why staying at home right now is probably so so important uh, and making sure that we are practicing the social distancing uh, norms that the government Mr Modi you know Prime Minister Modi has has uh, taken such a clear direct step um it's so that we can not we can avoid all these situations that you're talking about. right uh but you know you spoke about work from home now you know uh there are big companies uh who have now come up and said because of this first lockdown uh they have had to get their employees to work out of home and they save on cost they save on rents and many are you know perhaps thinking about doing this seriously at least the non essential non customer facing staff may be asked to work from home uh they have higher productivity and lower cost for uh, the companies do you think this could impact the demand for co working spaces 
I don't. Uh, in fact, I think that what what you're saying is actually going to impact the demand for traditional uh, real estate more because you know, uh, with a co-working space, you can even come and take an office for a month. Right. Um, with a traditional office space, those leases are three for three to nine nine years. So, um, what you will see, and what we've started to see, is a strategy that enterprises will, you know, uh, take, which is having core space. So, having some amount of space which is long term, um, yeah. but then at the same time having a percentage which can, which is in a flexible co-working, you know, type of setup. Um, which brings me back to why you know this, which takes me back to why this industry is so important for commercial real estate and commercial uh, real estate developers is that you need to be able to provide this kind of value to your enterprises within your portfolio, and you know why uh, um, why not have a co-working space like you know WeWork or any of the other guys uh, as a percentage of your portfolio that you can offer. You know this flexibility to uh, to your customers. All right, we have another question that is coming from Akash Khattar. He's asking, going forward, what will be the new strategies uh, for the revenue model of working companies, uh, other than just these rentals? Uh, any other ideas that come to your mind where which could become new revenue streams for co-working companies? Yeah, um, we are. You know. Uh, already experimenting during this time on a lot of things. Um, so you know, one thing for us, we work uh, and our we work members is that our membership is actually much beyond just the physical space, right? We offer a global community, but and also offer access to all of these amazing services as well as events and things like that that we usually, you know, throw. So something we're practicing and you know experimenting with right now is. How do we become a, a, a provider for, say, online uh, learning? Um, we've, you know, created a partnership with Upgrad uh, that they were able to offer to a lot of our members. Um, we're actually doing virtual events uh, while people are actually, you know, sitting at home, um, from dance classes to like workouts to origami to, you know, uh, thought leadership talks. And so we are looking at how we can connect not just with the, in the physical space, but actually be able to connect this community uh, even you know outside of our spaces. And a good part about this is that we've seen a lot of um, external people who are not our members, you know, wanting to join and, and actually take part in these events. Um, so that allows us to really access a lot more people uh, as well. Um, and uh, like uh, the other part I mentioned was services. So we tie up and we partner with a lot of service providers that businesses need um, and offer them discounts through you know WeWork. So something like a, a Microsoft Office license or Amazon Web Services, a uh, discount at that. So you know being able to offer these uh, these service other services to our members, uh, you know apart from just like the space is something that we're looking at. Right. Um, Mr. Alok Modi is asking a question. Uh, he's saying it's tough times, maybe co working will actually help small businesses going forward, but pricing will go down. Uh, but your landlords may not reduce rent. How will you manage as you will have contracts and investments into space? Also, will the, do you see in the near future some, uh, uh, you know, uh, pricing going lower? Uh, if you do manage to, uh, you know, negotiate with the landlords, uh, would you be then passing on? The Look, I, I don't. Again, like I don't think we're just, you know, the pricing is gonna go lower. I think we need to do stuff to support our small, so smaller members, and okay. so we will try to ease off the pressure, you know, from them uh, and help them tie through this current period. But I honestly don't believe that this is suddenly gonna impact uh, pricing in the long term. Um, and a lot of our members, everyone, once we're out of this, is going to need an office space uh, to work out of uh, and, you know, to meet at and, and things like that. So, um, I don't see, uh, you know, a pricing pressure uh, okay. to, to come across. To 
Uh, uh, Karan, I would like to just uh, jump into the conversation. There are so many questions. I think. Uh, yeah, I can uh, see that. Like, oh yeah. God. So I just wanted to tell you that 575 people have attended this webinar. It's a great success for this webinar. So you know, uh, it will be tough for her to select questions and answer. There are so many questions. I want to make this webinar more interactive. If you don't mind, can you pick some questions and answer? Uh, 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 so it will be easy, and we can be more interactive and. Uh, uh, and I, I request all people, those who are on the webinar, please write their question with a name and designation and uh, let Karan answer Tor uh, Mulke Bol. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So I'm just going to look through some of these. Um, I think a lot of them we've addressed through many of the other questions. Um, there is one question that is coming from uh, Rajat Chhabra. Yeah. He's saying you mentioned that the rules of the games has changed post COVID nineteen. Do you think about the future of uh, workplace design? Is the era of open office concepts and collaboration areas seeing an end? Are we moving back to conventional style of working from six feet cubicles? Uh, what are you hearing from your clients on this topic? And I also want to check uh, with you, Karan. Uh, you also have your uh, office suites offering, right? Uh, uh, private suites. So, do you think that uh, perhaps this is an offering which you will push more? Give us a connection that we're living in. Yeah. So, I think um, you know two things. About seventy to almost seventy to ninety percent of our space usually is actually private office uh, offices and and uh, you know uh, individual cabins for members from all of all sizes. Um, like I mentioned earlier, um, I think right now it's too early to you know assume that the entire like behavior of humanity is going to change to such an extent that we can't interact with people uh, you know anymore. Um, like I mentioned, there's probably social distancing norms that we will have to put into place and cleaning, but we're not looking at any sort of drastic change to how we look at uh, offices and how we look at designing our uh, spaces. And I think more than ever, you need spaces to actually interact and come together and you know, meet people. And that's why our spaces will probably, um, you know, still, still remain as lively. Right. Um, Karan, a lot of questions have come through. Uh, Amit Marva is asking, uh, during this sort of, uh, you know, uh, conditions, uh, there must be customers who are seeking big discounts on monthly rentals for those who have longer tenure, le lease, uh, tenure leases with you. Uh, so, how do you manage this? I mean, uh, are, are some of your tenants uh, coming in saying that give me a discount because I, I, I don't have people coming in, I have a longer term lease for you. So you've got to be kinder to me than the others. <laughs> so again, you know, what we uh, put forward with, with the offer that we extended to our members and other players have done the same, you know, uh, in their own way, shape or form. We, we treat all of our members the same, whether you're a large enterprise or like, you know, one person freelancer to us it's it's not any different but we do understand the smaller businesses need more help uh, and so you know we are having conversations with them on a case-by-case -case basis the larger enterprises who are actually there for a longer period of time we've given you know we've offered as much credit as we could uh, and when they look at it you know hopefully from uh, a, a, the entire lease perspective they understand that they have got you know, the credit for these days. So, in fact, uh, it's the larger tenants who we count on to you know, pay us um, during this time uh, right now, um, which will allow us to actually offer larger credits to our smaller businesses uh, and you know, startups. So, um, again, like, you know, and most of our large companies you know, understand that and are willing to. Right. Uh, there's another question coming in from Mansukh Chandwani. Uh, he's asking, don't you feel because of the pandemic situation, 
many organizations that use co-working firms to house their staff will ask for flexible packages as opposed to monthly, quarterly, annual plans or longer lease contracts. So yes. what is the next trend in the near future? How does this impact the business model and expansion for larger players? Uh, and if you could tell us, uh, you know, for all kinds of your clients, you know, those that are large enterprises as well as uh, startups, are they going to be asking for flexible packages? Uh, would you have an offering there? Yes. So interesting question. Um, and it comes back to, you know, one of those things that we would love to innovate and move towards, uh, I think, a lot, lot more because of the situation. But we already do offer what we call like a regional pass or a global access pass. So you could, you know, buy that and come and use a WeWork space for a day uh, in the country or anywhere in the world. Uh, I know there's a lot of other players that also, you know, have a daily, hourly, um, you know, type of arrangement. Uh, and that's something that, you know, we are looking at increasingly uh, across the world. Um, not ready to roll out just yet, but it is definitely, you know, one of the things that, one of the innovations coming out of, uh, you know, COVID that we do believe is going to be um, high in demand from a lot of uh, from a lot of people um, and and like you said you know you even have um, companies taking this work from home strategy but every once in a while you need that person to come in for a meeting or come use a space uh, you know or that person needs to just get out of their house and actually come to an office to be as productive as they have been and so a flexible password uh, and is a great idea uh, you know, uh, for them. So Karan, I want to ask you one question uh, uh, before uh, this, uh, you know, COVID-19, like we were giving like, uh, you know, kind of a great experience. I can say the kind of experience like, you know, having, uh, you know, the, the fit outs to, you know, uh, experience of music, experience of, you know, uh, kind of beer and like all these freebies and stationery, everything was like a state of art. After this cost pressure, uh, uh, when the, obviously like you know, after two months of shutdown and when you go back to the business, there was a lot of cost pressures. And yeah. till today, uh, as for my knowledge, uh, no other co-working player could meet that, uh, you know, experience. Uh, that experience is amazing what we work is giving. Would you yeah. be able to continue that experience or would you be enhancing or what will be your strategy? That is one question. And second is, uh, and the entire industry globally uh, is under pressure what is how you manage yourself like how you manage that stress like i want to just know a bit uh, personal side of you that you know uh, uh, kind sure. of it's very important for entrepreneurs and other people those like you know uh, 550 people are on the chat that you know in uh, when you have a large portfolio large responsibilities how you manage yourself what is your leadership style uh, if you can give a little bit uh, light on this it would be great Sure. So I think there were two questions there. Uh, you know, one is um, uh, is our member experience and the, the you know our spaces, and we be able to deliver that. Um, I think you know more than anything, our like member experience is our first first priority. I mean, if you look at our company goals, uh, the first first thing that every employee is you know ranked upon is member experience. Uh, and so that is something that we will never dilute. Uh, I think we would much rather not put out a product at all or a space at all rather than dilute the experience uh, and also dilute the design of our spaces. So uh, that's something that we're very clear on. Um, and I think also just as a strategy over the last 12 months, we've been looking at you know, much more sustained uh, or sustainable growth and focused around profitability. Um, so that shift around 12 months ago has, you know, kept us in a, a stronger position today um, to be able to, you know, not only tie through this period, but actually continue to look at growth over the next, you know, uh, 36 to 60 months um, from, from here. Um, in terms of stress, <laughs> I, you know, my father has a, has a saying is, don't take stress, only give it. Uh, and so that's like the motto I would I would follow. Uh, but honestly, it has everything to do with my team. I trust my team, you know, a thousand percent and the team and like everyone that we have at WeWork is just incredible that it allows me to take on, I think, more st stress than anyone else or anyone else could because I know that I have 500 warriors who 
are fighting every day to make sure that you know we work and all of the members that come on the we work is a success um and so they helped me uh you know obviously take on a lot of that but but on to sure i'm an entrepreneur at the at the end of it and like these times actually are more exciting for me than a normal week in the office everything is actually like going as per normal right like i feel almost that i've been actually performing better in a in this time of crisis than i than i was maybe the last few months in the office where things were uh, you know more steady don't worry i'm not asking your marriage plans uh, i will not <laughs> but definitely you know what will be your three priorities post covid like you know what's top three priorities this question is asked by one of my friend i'm not naming but uh, yeah what's top three priorities as a leader as a as a you know uh, fighter when you go back to the work as we work what uh, three priorities you will follow so your your competitors your you know industry uh, people can take little uh, you know kind of guidance from here as a leader you should guide. yeah so um, top three priorities is the like, top priority right now is conserve cash uh in cash is king right now so as much as you can you need to conserve it um i we've already started at you know just analyzing the business to see how can you make the business uh much more variable in terms of costs right um uh, how much uh, cuz you know right now uh, in a situation like this you're really only worried about your fixed cost um and so how can you you know create much more uh, a variable structure within your organization um and then lastly i think strengthening our long term relationships or strengthening your long term relationships out of you know through the situation and then out of the situation is extremely important and for us um that is doing right by our members and that is doing right by you know our landlords and making sure that you know when we come out of this we can leverage those relationships and and continue to grow so those are my top 3 uh you know would be my top 3 priorities um coming out of this um and um, yeah and that's that's what we're thinking about one more question karan like i see a lot of uh, questions is around that question so that's why i'm just asking you uh pre yeah. uh, covid everybody was talking about op- open office and let's sit uh, you know kind of make a collaboration you know meet green anywhere today we are talking about the social distancing uh, already pushman vaccine has started a concept called six feet sit uh, at least six feet away from each other okay yeah. and now people are going away that you know we need to uh, we need to have two corridors three corridors and let's you know uh, don't uh, mix up uh, in the office uh, user <laughs> time or do you, as a cultural change what do you see uh, as a perspective that after covid how people react and how people behave with each other uh, post covid people will not be shaking hand definitely they will not be shaking the elbows also what they will be doing what do you imagine in your mind so look you know we have an interesting view point on this because uh, we've seen it happen in china already um, so china was shut and our buildings you know few buildings uh, were shut in china for a long time you know people were locked down for a long time um and i was just speaking to one of our colleagues in china this week uh, you know and asking him like how are things now and it was extremely positive to you know hear that people are going back to restaurants so he it was his birthday and his team was taking him out for dinner uh, you know and it was just like a normal dinner obviously he didn't mention at restaurants there is like you know um checking temperature and there are like you know there are certain restrictions and china has a tracking system to you know see where you been also so that uh, if there's any alert they, they can do that so i think you'll have all of these preventive measures um even within our we work spaces um you know the spaces are now like 80 90% full people are like coming back to the office um things are going back to normal see so i i mean if it's any cue to take you know from what happened in china or south korea and what's happening there now um it's extremely positive to know that you know humans are moving back to how things were norm- normally and i wouldn't uh, i wouldn't jump to conclusions that we need to now like i don't know like can't even hug, you can't even like hug someone or like give someone a high five anymore it would be a sad world who's the one who uh, whom you would like to hug and you know like <laughs> who's the one who's the mm. i'm going to come and hug you for putting me on this webinar 
thank you uh, anisha you please carry on with your question and can, uh, I would, uh, uh, karan you can again i would request that you know so many questions it will be tough for yeah us it's to... very tough for me to read the questions i am also be answering so it's uh, because there's a lot of them um but uh, yeah i'm happy to if we can take maybe like two or three more and then uh, yeah okay so yeah. anisha please carry on Yeah, so you know there is this interesting question that is coming from Nupur Agarwal. She says uh, she is from Pocket Pixels, a branding agency, and she wants to ask if WeWork is also planning to have a virtual membership option. Okay, so that's one of virtual membership. So, again, another great idea, but uh, nothing. I mean, there's nothing that we've officially like planned as yet. um but like i mentioned we are looking at innovations that were you know um that we can start introducing to the market that comes out of this current situation so virtual membership uh, you know hourly like uh, pay pay as you go sort of membership um uh, you know and and things we already have like regional access and and things like that um will continue to be there uh and i think it's a great idea um uh, and we're definitely looking at it uh, not just in india but globally right so this is a question from uh, piyush jain of cbre he says uh, we work is also about building communities within centers so yeah. how are you keeping your members engaged during this lockdown time you spoke about yeah uh, great question uh piyush hope you're staying safe it's good to hear from you um so um what we're doing already uh, is you know constantly engaging with our members even right now and like i mentioned earlier for us we work and our members is more than just the physical space where you know a community of entrepreneurs and community of businesses so we're doing online classes uh, you know our own uh, people team out of we work uh, that runs training sessions for our employees is actually now opening that out for other employees <coughs> and all of our members to join and actually come and learn about leadership skills and things like that um we're doing a lot of fun events zumba crossfit yoga um you know art um and all of that stuff is happening as uh, as we can and one of the biggest things we're trying to do is even through this connect all of our members digitally whether that be over zoom whether that be through our we work uh, you know app that we have which connects all of our businesses because there are a lot of businesses right now that actually need help they need you know uh, support with um around branding or they need support with some accounting stuff they need you know they need a lot of things that they probably didn't think they needed uh, and probably are going to need coming out of this so we're trying to connect as many businesses uh you know and talk to our members constantly and try to connect businesses so that um they also keeping productive and they able to you know use this time um positively rather than than negative right uh got another question has coming from uh, bhupendra he's head leasing north india kushman in bakel he saying yeah. the code and word occupier clients will now be open to evaluating co-worker operators for enterprise solutions that is Large requirements for flexible workplaces. Yeah, a, a thousand seat upwards in multiple cities. Is the Indian co-working industry ready to address this kind of requirement? Despite the fact that quite a few foreign investors may not be willing to invest immediately uh, because of the impact of COVID. So, I mean, uh, in larger cities like uh, Delhi, Bombay, perhaps you have larger uh, scale uh, workplaces, and you can yeah. get to the large enterprises. but can this be done uh, uh, all over india in, in some of the other cities as well i mean we live for this this is why we come, this is why we've been building the business um i think of course there's a lot of you know there's enough players who can uh, definitely absorb uh, you know all of this demand and arms are wide open um, you know if you guys want to share that demand with us but you know what i will say is that more and more if you know as flexible solutions become more popular and landlords are going to see that as well it's a huge opportunity for landlords and co-working places players to actually you know partner where the landlord can 
you know make an investment uh, and we have a revenue share type of model with the landlord okay. um, so you're able uh, these are demand back deals right and so you have a ready client they want a more flexible term uh, they don't want to put up the capex um, and you know potentially they're going to grow from there so for both parties i think it's a great value proposition uh, where you can actually make the landlord the partner um, you know if you're not able to fund uh, the capital um, but you don't really need only foreign capital to fund you know, like the growth of your business right you have a lot of local capital that is ready to put uh, or take bets on indian players um you have a lot of these fit out funding type of uh, you know companies that uh, are able to um, you know provide uh, the financing for the fit out and and uh, you know you just pay a rental for it so you got to be creative i mean we're not going to stop taking demand because of you know a p not putting in money i think like where there's enough entrepreneurs who are running co working spaces who will figure it out and who will innovate and um, you know who will find some source to make sure that they meet the demand uh, karan i want to ask you one question like uh, when i was setting up this webinar i uh, spoke to a lot of uh, players and a uh, lot of people are scared to come in front of uh, public and uh, you know might be some answer will go so you know i, I really respect and salute your courage to come and you know speaking this you know audience like 520 people are there would you like to use this platform to pass a message to your uh, competitors that uh, you know in this you know when uh, when industries are in crisis they they generally come up with good idea they come up with you know uh, you know good uh, teamwork in terms of the competition come together and they you know they form some kind of idea what will what will be your message to your competitors uh, uh, people those who are in the same space and how yeah. they fight this situation Yeah so uh, interestingly enough we actually have this huge whatsapp group uh, that originally started with few uh, co-working operators and now i think i don't know there's like hundreds of people on that uh, group and so it's very active during this time and it's actually been amazing to see that you know we don't treat this as a compare like you said a competitor but we're peers in this industry uh, and you know all of us have actually come together to try to create a unified voice uh, firstly so that we can address this across the board uh, and you know come out of the situation stronger um, what i will tell right. them which they already know uh, is you know keep conserve as much cash as you can um, i think what you need to do uh, is think about the long term and not just the short term the longevity of your members the longevity of your partnership with your landlords um, with your other operational vendors figure out a win-win situation that actually uh, helps everyone get out of it rather than uh, rather than you know just one um, one person um, and you know just continue to believe that uh, as uh, even though everyone seems to think like suddenly co-working is going to be dead that it's not uh, because we know what the demand is we know that out of this flexibility and uh, community and you know um, everything that we provide right now is only going to become more valuable to all segments of society, of companies uh, and you sang on we're going to get through this and we're going to get through it together and we're all going to be fine and one more question uh, karan uh, like uh, before you know this covid 19 anybody who has a space anybody who has a you know uh, kind of little idea and people have started co-working like anything you know it was like <laughs> <laughs> if you have nothing then you start co-working like lot of players has come in the market without even thinking yeah. like, can you if i ask you in like one or two line define what is the meaning of co-working business like you know, it is about just making a beautiful office is it about getting some tenant and starting you know some uh, leasing what exactly is this you know what is the uh, can you just crack this uh, uh, this puzzle because i sometimes get lost yeah. so listen i will just i will just point out firstly that many people started because it's an extremely profitable business and they think that they're going to make a lot of money so contrary to the fact what everyone else says um and second um like i will co-working has now taken on you know many forms but really it's community working right and it's being able to be in a shared environment with um different types of businesses people uh, and understanding that you know being part of a larger community or a space 
um, is going to help you and your business actually grow a lot, um, lot further. Um, everyone has, you know, taken on that interpretation in different ways and are targeted for, you know, different things. But really, what you're seeing is the uberfication of office. Uh, where you really pay for what you need and you get a lot more in terms of value and uh, um, in, and your office space is not just your office space it's a space to you know connect with other businesses it's a space where you can actually go to the gym it's a space where you might be able to buy your groceries um, and after work you could have you know a party with your co-workers um, it's there are so they've now become social hubs um, you know, for the working population, uh, and uh, has I would say has added immensely to the cult, the startup culture in our country and also globally. Um, we are like custodians of all the smaller businesses that exist within the country. And um, think about co like a COVID period without co-working. What would have happened to all of these smaller businesses? Like, where would they have been right now? Where would they have been working? Like, who would have taken care of their spaces? Who would have made sure that their spaces are ready once they come back? Um, like, the landlords would not have given them, you know, waivers or credits. Um, so, like, you've added something and you've created something that has to elevate an entire, um, entire, you know, segment of the population. Mm-hmm. Um, and so co-working is something right now it will evolve into something else a few years from now uh, and you know it will, we will keep innovating and the product will keep changing and um, you know we hope to just keep providing the value that we're providing to, uh, to our members. Very, uh, very interesting question has come up uh, from Vistab Bhagwa, uh, the AVA Vistab uh, and company and they have uh, asked a very interesting question that a uh, lot of hotel players have said that uh, because hospitality is not uh, working uh, right now and I think for the next uh, couple of months or maybe a year, the hosp- uh, hospitality will be facing this challenge. Uh, they, they want to uh, start some co-working spaces out of the hotels. What do you see? Like, uh, do you think like this idea is workable or will it be uh, going Yeah, forward? they should call us and we should partner and they shouldn't think about doing it themselves because they only know how to run a hotel and not a co-working space. <laughs> Can you have some question? Right, uh, so you know, Karan, uh, the way he described co-working in India, it seems more like a brotherhood. It's not just, you know, of uh, going to office and coming back. It's about supporting each other and, uh, you know, being there for each other and hanging out and enjoying with each other. Let's hope we go back to that soon enough. Um, Karan, there is uh, an interesting question that is coming from Faisal Siddiqui, Vice President AV Business uh, at Tom Infotech Private Limited. He thinks, mm-hmm. do you think there should be a dedicated telepresence room, a high-end video conferencing room, every co-working facility post-COVID? Will this help? Um, yeah, well, you know, we obviously provide video conferencing uh, as is. Um, would be interesting, you know, for like, I guess, for companies from town hall, like do larger town halls and things like that. Um, we could look into it, but I don't. Again, like you know, it's a great. It would be a great idea and a great addition. And we just have to see like how long is this actually a reality that people, you know, have to work this way. Um, because the hope is that you know whether that's in three months or in eighteen months or two years when we find a vaccine. That we can go back to being humans <laughs> and actually interacting in a human way. Right. Another uh, question is coming uh, from uh, Himanshu Kumar of the Embassy Group. He's a transition manager. Uh, yeah. I think uh, should we make these things mandatory at WeWork? Masks, gloves, sanitizers, and uh, the COVID tracking app, the Arukya Setu, for all individuals who do come into a co-working space. Uh, what do you think about that? I mean, along with the brotherhood, those precautions. <laughs> Definitely. Um, I, I think I started off by saying the safety of our members and employees is top, top priority. And if the health organizations or the government believe that it's important to, you know, have these rest- you know restrictions and have all of this in place we will 
most definitely follow it. In fact, we'll probably go a step above and try to make sure that we're extra cautious with it. Um, and we already, you know, before we went into lockdown, we were already providing this for a lot of our members. We did provide them masks. We did provide gloves in our spaces, um, you know, and we had shut down um, some of the larger amenity spaces and things like that early on. And so, yes, we will definitely take any precaution to you know, make sure our members are safe. Right. Um, um, another interesting question um, is coming from uh, Soumya Mandal. Uh, Soumya is asking, uh, how does WeWork feel that they can transform the archaic Indian corporate headquarters post-COVID-19? The aim is to create a work infrastructure that takes business beyond the workplace. I mean, uh, we have these large corporate campuses, you know, the tech hubs. Uh, you know, is are, are that going to, those kind of uh, large campuses going to change, or can you work along with these companies to you know decentralize their work uh, workplaces? Um, it's an interesting question. Um, we strive to try to move people from traditional workspaces to you know, uh, our spaces, which are obviously, you know, in our eyes, um, highly design focused, extremely uplifting when you come in and adds a lot to your culture and, and to your organization. Um, I think what will be important for these larger companies is having the flexibility piece that we spoke about early on. Uh, and, you know, being able to have some amount of like percentage of the employees working uh, flexibly. So ideally we would, try to like at least capture that you know within co-working and I think as they see uh, the experience being drastically different from you know and a uh, lot better than their traditional office we can hopefully like shift all of them uh, eventually but um, you know for a lot of these small companies uh, for these traditional companies we've already seen you know someone like Mahindra and Mahindra uh, Z5 are members with us. So these companies are already taking, you know, steps to uh, work on their culture and actually look at alternative workspaces um, and not spend the cash on, on real estate, but actually spend it in their in their business. Karan, one question is an interesting question which you have answered uh, in a bit, but uh, uh, Mr. Jack Tondak has asked this question. Time of crisis have historically also been opportunities for change. Karan, yes. are you optimistic that uh, we emerge from this? It could be a chance for businesses, strategies and plan of operation for players like you. So it's a very relevant question and uh, I would like you answer it. I I mean, like I said, as a, for an entrepreneur, you almost like live for these kind of uh, times uh, and the best sort of ideas come out of you know these times uh, we have a we have a you know a, a strategy innovation team that we're building out uh, at we work and the first assignment that i gave them was figure out how we're going to spin this situation to become uh, you know uh, to make it work for us in the future so what are the ideas what are the businesses what are the things we can offer that is going to help us, you know, in a post-COVID uh, world, uh, assuming that, you know, some amount of this time period uh, ends up as a permanent, you know, impact on our lives. Um, so, I think there were a lot of ideas that came out from the questions itself of new things that could, you know, come about. Um, and it's probably different for every sector. For travel, it's going to be something completely different. You know, for hotels, it's going to be something completely different. Like you mentioned, they're thinking about different things. So, everyone is going to, yeah, I mean, it's innovate or die, right? Uh, if you don't innovate and you don't change, uh, you've seen the biggest businesses that haven't innovate um, get disrupted or, uh, you know, get taken up by newer businesses that did innovate. And so, if you don't innovate during this time, you will find yourself falling behind the uh, behind the herd. Yes, uh, Karan, like uh, as we work with uh, you know uh, large investors and other people, here yeah. uh, your father is your investor, and you know like you you are on the board. When the tough questions are coming from your father, <laughs> how you how you tackle those situations? Like, can you just uh, give a little? So, it's interesting, um, mm -hmm. but. I think like for us, it's, un you know, we understand that they're two separate businesses and I've also given 
uh, the uh, embassy team the same notice that I've given to every other landlord and we're having those conversations and trying to come up with a win-win uh, solution for, for both parties. Um, and uh, it's an interesting conversation on our dinner table over the last like few days for sure. Uh, We've not reached a, we've not reached an agreement yet, but I think we're getting close. Yeah, one very interesting question, Karan. We will not take much questions after that. <laughs> uh, one one or two last questions. Uh, uh, Avnish uh, Avnish Singh, uh, managing uh, director uh, for India Tishman Spare, is interested. Uh, he's a he's asked a very interesting question. Given the current environment, and also around viewers globally. Do you see an opportunity to acquire uh, Weaver Global? <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. I don't know. Definitely not. Um, I think that you know we are more than happy with what we have in India, um, and you know um, our global partners are extremely strong and extremely profitable right now. Uh, uh, you know, have a strong balance sheet, so I don't really see any issue coming out. Uh, you know, of that. Um, and we want to do our part for the, the global rework story of you know, building out the India business um, and, uh, and make it a big success. So that's the, that's the major focus. But interesting idea. We will see. <laughs> you should pay, pay, pay for me this, you know. Like, and another question, uh, like uh, Japanese... So if, you, if you organize the funding for it, I'll pay, I'll pay straight off. <laughs> it's a little expensive right now, but uh, we, we'll see. We'll do next webinar on that. Uh, kind of last <laughs> question, like uh, Japanese have already stopped uh, any Chinese, uh, you know, uh, like the Japanese have planned that no Japanese company will be uh, manufacturing in, uh, you know, uh, yeah, and they're coming back to Japan. And, you know, like a uh, lot of governments, like Australian governments have, uh, uh, you know, uh, mandated that no Chinese companies will buy any uh, distressed uh, Australian companies. Like, you know, uh, uh, new sentiments are developing globally. Yeah. What do you think, like, you know, how the uh, how world will change because of these sentiments? Like, uh, uh, you know, there are so many things are happening. People are going bankrupt and so many distress, so much distress will come in the world. How how you think about these situations? Um, I, I, it's tough to give a straight answer to that but what I will say is that we were for a long time in this phase of globalization and you know everyone uh, all the countries and you know uh, business happening cross borders mm -hmm. um, what we've seen as part of the spread of this pandemic is probably the big like one of the disadvantages of globalization to you know some uh, some level and what you might see is countries trying to be much more self-sustaining and not you know dependent on other um, countries or importing stuff from other countries um, just us locally you know even before the, uh, we were before this we localized our complete product supply so we used to import a lot of stuff from China and you know other places um, now we do everything locally with local vendors and things like that so that just is a you know a decision we took from a cost standpoint and from a risk standpoint. Um, it's tough. You will you will have some sectors that want to stay away, and then you will. Or people's mindset is that you know suddenly it's taboo to do business with the Chinese or something like that. But that's not a long term, like that's not a long term mindset that we should have. I think the idea should be how do we get back to being. Not to going back to normal, uh, then then discriminating just because of this situation. Uh, Karan, uh, if you see uh, five years back, whenever any corporate is building a new office, they were always telling like Google just a banado, you know, like let's uh, <laughs> let me give like a Google kind of office, you know. People are looking at you know Gmail, like uh, Google and searching some photographs. I want Google kind of office. Now the new yeah. office, like people say, we work just a banado, you know, like. I want office like a Viva, you know. Yeah. I want that same color. Like you know, people like your furniture. People like design. Uh, and I, I, I will say that a lot of furniture, uh, light manufacturer, furniture manufacturer, a lot of you know, uh, architects got uh, so much of you know uh, jobs from you. And yeah. today, what do you see? Like how what will be going uh, post COVID? Like it will be the, remain same that Viva just a banana, or will be new sentiments will come in the market? Well, I hope it's. Not 
व्यूअर जैसा बना दो बट हम व्यूअर जाएंगे हम व्यूअर ही जाएंगे बट लुक आई थिंक इट्स इट्स फ्लैटरिंग ऑब्वियसली लाइक आवर डिजाइन इज समथिंग दैट वी आर वेरी वेरी प्राउड ऑफ एंड आवर यू नो हाउ हाउ स्पेस इज लुक इज समथिंग दैट वी आर वेरी प्राउड ऑफ वी कंटिन्यू टू इवॉल्व आवर डिजाइन टू कीप अप विद द ट्रेंड्स एंड द ग्लोबल डिजाइन ट्रेंड्स एंड वी विल कंटिन्यू टू डू दैट we want to be always the innovator and the pioneer in what workspace design should be because that's really our entire business is just building our workspaces operating workspaces so if we're not ahead of everyone else then like why are we in this business right so that's going to be the focus but um for our vendors um i think that you know um we and we did like a lot of crazy growth over the last few years we're going to have a much more sustained growth um we're really trying to double down on our partners that have stuck on with us for the last you know 3 years um and try to use our repeat as many of those our partners as possible rather than going out to finding new ones uh, and again like i said like build wrong long term relationships right uh, and try to like make sure that we both come out of this uh, winning and um and if you or anyone uh, who is on the call hears something about someone wanting an office like we work you can just give them my number and my team will reach out to them to make sure that they get an office like we work so i think the next question emerges from this uh, last statement that you you yeah. were looking at enterprise solution very seriously i i met you 3 4 months back yeah and uh, we had a long conversation about enterprise yeah. solution and then india is looking at you know uh, i'm sure that this opportunity is coming on the way that uh, as you rightly said that uh, rental based offices enterprise so so how we work is uh, trying to tap this opportunity uh, so uh, yeah like you said we've already been doing that um, you know with enterprises and our enterprise spaces um a lot of the times that dedicated spaces dedicated floors or dedicated sections of the building uh, you know um, so that's the dedicated space and we're working towards um you know continuing to provide that um and it meets both the the requirement of privacy uh, and at the same time not having to put in the capex and you know remaining flexible and things like that so i think it actually becomes better when we come out of this situation because you also have the the privacy um that you you know would have wanted um but to share again like like i said we're seeing that more corporate occupiers are going to want more flex space and if that's the case and you know we believe that that's going to be the case then we are set like flexible office providers across the uh, country you know are at an advantage to be able to provide this to uh, to these customers thank you karan i think we have taken a lot of uh, uh, time from you and it is a yeah. great uh, insightful session people uh, i'm sure people those who have attended this uh, webinar uh, must have got some answers for their question query the world is changing the work is changing way of work is changing and i'm sure uh, leaders like you will guide us uh, to go through this kind of uh, times and uh, anisha uh, over to you yes um, thanks uh, so much for taking the time out to speak with us uh, karan uh, you really uh, shown us that this is uh, you know a brotherhood and uh, co working is not just about uh, cheap solutions to near term problems but it is a long term strategy uh, to conserve cash and to you know foster the spirit of uh, you know togetherness of um, ingenuity of collaboration uh, so yeah. just hoping that going ahead uh, co working is uh, seen as the next best option for even large companies to send their workforce to Uh, there was this one question that came that I quickly want to uh, you know put in. Uh, somebody asked that you know uh, because work from home has become so popular, uh, would you then look as a co-work uh, uh, co-working company look at places closer to people's residences so that you know they just walk to work and it's uh, yeah working out of work but yeah. uh, home but you know they walk to work. Uh, I mean, would you then uh, look for a location if? Uh, yeah so a good place or will you look for a location because a lot of people live there uh, will that also not become a factor a great, great question um so that's something we do already i think before we you know before we select uh, a space 
uh, or a building but there's a couple of things we look at um, social infrastructure is one so having restaurants having access to the building uh, public transport you know all of that is extremely important um, having a large residential catchment around it uh, means that people want to you know always work closer to home traffic is always an issue and if there's large residential catchments it's most likely large corporate occupiers already looking at space uh, you know in those areas and so we want to be close to that and you know which is why i guess in like mumbai and in bangalore we have you know buildings scattered in every single micro market right now we have you know 12 15 buildings uh, in each of these cities we want to continue to expand and the idea is going to be to expand in um, high density location Uh, you know, high traffic locations and high revenue locations where you know um, rentals and things like that are um, high, and there's less there's less space for people to to take up. So that's always um, you know how we look at um, our real this estate selection. It would be a total dream come true for people like uh, me. Anisha. Anisha, last yes. one question, uh, Karan. Uh, last before uh, we just close the session. Uh, i break a question that i see you know founder of facebook uh, you know having the black t-shirt and like you know all the big uh, you know entrepreneurs uh, have you know some dress code what is the magic band is dress code can you just tell me always i see you in a black t-shirt and <laughs> always trendy so, so any magic band is no i think it's like me just being lazy about like you know figuring out what i'm going to wear but someone like one vinayak from my team actually told me something interesting the other day is that humans have a capacity to only make a certain amount of decisions in a day right and so when you actually have or you think you have many decisions to make in a day you try to avoid making you know decisions on something that is probably yeah. trivial and so i just pick a i have like a stack of black t-shirts and vivo t-shirts i just pick one out and like make i'm always late um, i'm always like rushing to get to the office or like get out of the gym it's the easiest for me i feel like very comfortable being in the office and our culture you know is also like that my brother and my dad both wear formal shirt and like trousers and all of that and go to the office every day and my brother would probably meet me in the evening and be like you know i wish i could just wear what you're wearing and and go to the office so um yeah it's comfort and like a little, little bit of laziness <laughs> thank you thank you everyone uh, for joining this webinar and thank you karan and anisha and look forward to see you again on friday with ramesh nayar country head jll interesting uh, uh, episode we will be having and another saturday 5:30 we will be having with lara yumi a great leader fortune 500 uh, uh, you know leaders have taken coaching from her and she the amazing uh, leader on about leadership uh, how to uh, develop culture how to develop yourself as a great human being she will be coming on saturday 5:30 look forward to see you again thank you thank you everyone. thank you tushar and thank, thank you anisha you. and i know there were a lot of questions i'm really sorry Didn't go get to go through all of them. I, if I look at my thing, it's one sixty-seven questions that we still have. Um, so everyone who's watching, thank you so much, and you know, hope to see you guys around. And uh, apologize if I wasn't able to answer any of those questions. Thank you, Karan. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And uh, for everyone, please uh, uh, be safe at home and uh, follow the social distancing rule and be at home. Thank you.